Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this 2023 PK presentation. My name is Thomas Jeffrey. I am a teacher in Daegu at Kyungbuk National University and today's topic is cultural differences in English teaching methods between Korean and non-Korean teachers. This study originally took part throughout 2020 and 2021. It involved a variety of different Korean and non-Korean participants at various institutions, levels, schools and universities. It was subsequently published in English Language Teaching's Canadian Centre of Science and Education. Korean and non-Korean teachers were asked identical questions as part of a questionnaire that was intended to gauge if there were differences that existed between teaching methods and approaches to teaching English as a foreign language, the following of which will now be discussed. Perhaps somewhat unsurprisingly, the most significant finding related to di the different teachers' views on tests. It supported the notion that Korean teachers valued tests to gauge their students' abilities far more than non-Korean teachers. This was unsurprising considering the importance of tests within the Korean educational system. With regards to what this looked like in terms of assessing the raw data, when responding to the following statement, without tests we cannot truly understand a student's ability, 66% of the Korean responders either agreed or strongly agreed with the statement, whereas only 58% of the non-Korean responders disagreed or strongly disagreed. A second follow-up statement was also provided on tests, stating a smart student should always score well on tests. Non-Koreans strongly disagreed with this statement with 58% responding negatively. However, the Korean group responded significantly more favourably, with only 27% of responders giving negative answers. The second topic that caused the largest divergence between the two groups' views was that of memorization. When given the statement memorization is the best way to get students to remember important information, the Korean group showed only a slight tendency to prefer memorization techniques overall. However, the non-Korean group showed a strong aversion to the same statement. A further area of difference was that of individual and group orientation. When given the statement Classroom harmony is more important than individual happiness. The non-Korean groups showed a far stronger aversion to the idea of sacrificing individual happiness, with no participant appearing to select strongly agree to the statement. For the Korean cohort responding to the exact same statement, the number of negative responses was only 21%, potentially showing a strong difference in methodology and approach with regarding group and individual participation within the classroom. The use of lesson plans also showed a strong difference between the two groups. The statement, I have a plan for my class and feel uncomfortable if I do not follow that plan, showed a large difference. Non-Korean data disagreed strongly with this, with a stronger inclination towards improvisation in the classroom. More than half of the participants responded negatively. The Korean group showed a strong opposite inclination with 62% of responders saying that they would feel uncomfortable not following a lesson plan. Furthermore, none of the Korean participants selected strongly disagree with the statement, I have a plan for my class and feel uncomfortable if I do not follow that plan. Attitudes towards rules and instructions arising from cultural backgrounds can also dictate whether people feel the need to explicitly state instructions. A statement to design to test this was put to the two groups as follows. Instructions should be explicitly stated, rather than have students figure things out. The results were as follows. The non-Korean group favoured the use of explicit instructions within the classroom, with 54% of respondents showing a preference for their use. However, 46% of the Korean group disagreed with the statement and preferred the use of implicit instructions within the classroom environment. As part of the questionnaire and survey, Finally, an open-ended question was included at the bottom to gauge participants' opinions in areas that they thought needed more discussion if they felt it needed. The results between the two groups again showed a large difference. Memorization and tests were brought up several times by many responders. An example of a Korean response was that Koreans are too focused on tests and separating students based on their level. 
An example of a non-Korean response to the open-ended question was that we shouldn't be relying so much on tests. And another responder said, I don't think they're a good representation of a person's skills. This was the one point of the questionnaire and survey where both groups showed the strongest alignment. Both the Korean and non-Korean cohort appeared to, on numerous occasions, question the need of such a heavily test-based system within Korea. However, it is important to point out that this is actually in contrast to most Korean teachers' views earlier on in the data. One unforeseen consequence of the open-ended question was the sheer quantity of data from Korean responders alluding to the need for the notion of critical thinking with the Korean educational system. The responses were as follows. One Korean teacher stated the atmosphere that feels that free speech interferes with the class seems to be the Korean style. Another said that debate and participatory class is the foreign class method. And a third that it should be changed and that the educational system in Korea should be more student led. Needless to say, there is no right or wrong way to teach English within Korea. Rather, the data simply suggests that there is a strong want on the part of most Korean responders to move away from the more traditional styles of Korean education towards more student-led environment, perhaps where critical thinking can thrive. In conclusion, this study found that there were large and differing views between Korean and non-Korean teachers when teaching foreign language English as a subject. Most notably, those were with regards to tests and memorization. It also showed a want and perhaps need on the part of Korean participants for critical thinking within the Korean educational system.